We, Forestry England, alongside our partners, the Roy Dennis Wildlife Foundation, are looking to restore white-tailed eagle as a breeding species on the south coast of England once again. This is a species that really should be part of our landscape. The white-tailed eagle is increasing across Europe and it's very numerous in some places. There's 1,500 pairs in Poland, 800 pairs in Germany. This is a bird that lives alongside people elsewhere and it would live alongside people here were it not for the past actions of human and the historical persecution. So at the outset of our project, there are a lot of concerns about what may or may not happen. This is a bird that's been absent from our landscape for a long period of time, 240 years since it last bred on the south coast of England. So it's perhaps understandable that people had that initial reticence. So we studied the birds for a number of different ways. I mean, one of the really neat things about the project and one of the really useful tools that we have is that all the birds that are released are fitted with these GPS transmitters. So that enables to give us really accurate information as to where the birds are at, at all times and to follow up their movements in the field. And then by doing that, we're of course able to track the early breeding behaviours of these birds. We're able to understand the diet of these birds through direct observations. And we can identify important areas for these birds in the future. And really that's important because these birds have been absent for so long. We need to get that understanding in place early so that we can ensure the recovery of this bird for the long-term future. These are fish remains. Try not to breathe in too deeply, Tim, is my advice. One of the ways we can study diet, of course, is collecting prey remains from nests. And what we've laid out today, Tim, is all the items that we collected from 2024. And we've got quite a nice selection, but predominantly, as you can see, fish. The diet of breeding white-tailed eagles is really important for us to understand. And that's why, from the outset of the project, we've really put a lot of emphasis on studying the birds and how they're catching prey, what they're feeding on. We've got this fantastic data set of over 700 observations now of them feeding in the landscape. And what that's shown us by studying this pair, that fish is really the key component of the diet, isn't it? When they're rearing young, it's fish they want to catch. And that's reflected really in what we've got here. I've noticed there is one piece that is a bit more identifiable. We've got some nice pike teeth on that jaw. We know pike is an important source of food for these birds across much of central and northwestern Europe, don't we? So. It's really great to see that. And I mean, as you say, pike is one of the key prey items, but we've got some, you know, some other species here as well, haven't we? We've got carp, we would say, but I mean, we know that they catch some larger species, so bream and also roach. And these are obviously quite large fish, but quite a lot of the fish they catch are quite small and so there's probably nothing left. And the point with fish remains is that we've done well to find this because quite often there virtually aren't any fish remains because the birds eat all of the individual they bring back to the nest. We know that fish is the key component of this pair's diet, 80% during April, for example. And one of the fish we don't see here, which we know is quite important, are European eel, the migratory eel, which we know they're very capable of robbing from herons particularly. You know, and eels are tough thing for these birds to swallow. And then obviously we have got some other stuff as well, some birds and also some rabbit here. One of the really unique things about the work we've done is the fact that, you know, we've got these prey remains and so this enables us to identify fish almost you know, usually to species level. But it's the fact we're able to observe them in the landscape as well and the fact that we know how the diet changes with age because every bird's satellite tagged. We know who each bird is, how old it is. And so we can really see how there's a real change in the composition of the diet from when they're young in their first winter when we know carrion is really important and how that then changes over time. They, they, they're good at catching rabbits early on, but then as they grow older and they become closer to breeding age, they gravitate to wetland sites. That's where they want to breed and that's why fish becomes more and more important. We're kind of at midway point of the project in a lot of respects. You know, we're still looking to release more birds because we haven't managed to release as many as we wanted to to date. Uh, we have those first pairs establishing and we have those, that first pair of bread. So we're kind of at that interesting point now where the project could really accelerate. Hopefully the population is going to continue to increase. So we've had a single pair breed for two years. It'll be really exciting to see other pairs becoming established and, and producing young. And then hopefully we will be able to release birds in other areas to just facilitate that geographical spread and encourage this fantastic bird to return to areas where it belongs.
we've been really encouraged by the success to date. Uh, we've still got a long way to go, but you know, at the moment we're, we're feeling really hopeful about the future.